we've got this curve y equals the square root of x squared minus 1, and we're asked to use the trapezium rule with four intervals to find an estimate for the integral between x equals 1 and x equals 3. Now when x is equal to 1, we're going to get 1 squared minus 1, we're going to get 0. So actually that is the starting point, and I'm going to take this one to be x equals 3. So splitting it into 2, I'm going to give this. And again, there we go, there's my four intervals. And then we're using straight lines to connect. So it gives a good estimate, in theory, as long as you use enough intervals, a good estimate for the area under the curve. Now, there's a formula in the formula book. You may well have seen the derivation of it, and it's given as this for n intervals. So I'm going to write down what h is, first of all. So h is going to be b is my 3, and a is 1, and then n is 4. So it's going to be 0.5. So for us, using four intervals, we've got a half times 0.5, then y0, the last one's going to be y4, and then two times the rest. Okay, so you need to focus on now creating a table of values x against y. The first point is 1. So this is when x is 1, then 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. Okay, and I'm going to write down the y values that correspond with each of these. So this is this is x 0 y0 is going to be 0 when I do 1 squared minus 1 square rooted. And then I'm going to use my calculators for the rest, just to be careful. Root 5 over 2. At this point, I would leave them at exact, just to try and you know, make sure I don't lose any accuracy. Last one's going to be root 8, 3 squared is 9 minus 1. I'll leave it as root 8 or 2 root 2, you could write it as. Okay, I think we're, we're ready now to put it in. So half times a half is just a quarter. Just carefully put it in your calculator like that. Three point two seven seven. And again, there's another seven. So, given that the three significant figures gives three point two eight, and that is going to be our estimate. Now, one thing that is worth doing because your calculator is right there to use is actually work out. You know the exact value. Your calculator is still actually using approximate methods to do this, but it'll be it'll be really accurate. 
could even do this at the start. I didn't want to make it all about the answer there. I want, you know, at the end of the day, I'm covering this video to kind of go over the method. Three point three six. So we're not we're not too far out. You know, it's not like we're getting sort of ten or anything. And immediately, it's going to help us answer part B. To be fair, this is going to be an underestimate. You can see when you draw the trapezium on, and I would recommend you do this, like there's these little bits that we're not actually counting. They're the bits that are missed. So you could you could say that, you could say the trapezia uh, underneath the curve, or you could say that the curve is concave, which means the gradient itself is decreasing. Um, and then the last bit, Explain how the trapezium rule could be used to obtain a more accurate estimate. Well, we could use more trapezia. Instead of using four, we could use eight, and then we could see how our answer compares. We could use 16 until we get the required accuracy on our answer that we're looking for. So use more trapezia um, over the same interval. Currently, you could say, like, you know, create them with smaller widths, but I think it's kind of implied if we're using more that the width is going to be smaller because of this formula here.